Well, thank you for joining us this week. I hope it's been been an interesting week. We started this week by focusing upon the amazing creation of an amazing and imaginative creator. We reminded ourselves that we are made in his image. We too are made with a myriad of possibilities to be creative in the way we live and produce. We reminded ourselves that all that God made bows down in worship to him, from the highest mountain to the tiniest snowflake. The wonders of creation remind us to worship the creator. We've looked at some of the things Paul has had to say in his amazing chapter 8 of the book of Romans, how Jesus has redeemed the whole of creation. We find new life in Jesus, but creation also will find full restoration through Jesus. And that's what Christ has begun in us, children of God. And what he's begun gives hope to the rest of the groaning creation that restoration, renewal is coming. And yesterday we focused on the current state of a fallen world, fallen because the acts of human beings who have failed in their caretaking, who've lived as though the world is a a resource for us to to use for our own benefit, entirely our own benefit. We've reminded ourselves of the call from scripture for lament and repentance for the parts we've played. Lament and repentance, if genuine, must lead, of course, to change. So there is a chance for us to dip into that a bit today as we finish off this subject. We're going to read from um, the letter to the Colossians. Colossians 1, 15 to 23. Colossians 1, 15 to 23. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behaviour, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body. Through death, to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. This is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. I love this passage. I find what Paul communicates mind-blowing and breathtaking as he talks about who Jesus is. All things were created through him and by him. He holds everything together. He is the firstborn of the new creation. All of God's fullness dwells in Jesus. That Through his acts on the cross, he has reconciled God with everything on earth and in heaven. Again, in this passage, you see Paul is tying us into creation, clearly reminding his readers that what Jesus has done will affect the whole of creation. The gospel is not an individualistic gospel, all about Jesus offering me a place in his heaven, a ticket to heaven. It's far bigger than that, far more amazing than that, far more mind-blowing. And of course, it starts with us with that, that I have a place through what Jesus has done for me. But it's far more mind-blowing than just my individualistic salvation. Throughout scriptures, God is on a mission. The good news is that God is working his purposes out to bring restoration to the whole of creation, to bring that shalom, that total peace and wholeness to the whole of creation. And as we've heard a few days ago, we are part of that mission of God. We, the children of God, are invited to share in what God is doing and has done through Jesus. And when faced with the stark reality of climate change and global warming and the warnings of ecological disaster, it can be tempting for Christians to take the position that the world is doomed anyway. There's little we can do about it. Let's hunker down and wait. After all, God will sort it out when Jesus returns. But I don't believe that's the call of scripture. Our story with God starts back in Genesis with humankind called to be caretakers of all that God has made. 
and it finishes, or maybe it restarts, with our renewed role as caretakers of his recreation when Christ returns. That's our future. This surely has to change the way we live now. Followers of Jesus, children of God, should be at the forefront of caring for our world, through our words, through our actions, through the way we spend our money, the way we invest our time, through the consumer choices that we make. In Romans 12, Paul reminds his readers that Jesus wants to renew their minds, transform their understanding, that Jesus wants his followers to walk in step with him, not in step with a prevailing culture. And our prevailing culture is one of greed and selfishness. One where humans have the right to take what they want to satisfy their own perceived needs. This culture is anti-gospel. So our last song of the week that we're going to finish with, again, is part of the doxicology project. It's called We Are the Tenants of the King. It reminds us of our Genesis call to be workers in his garden, to be caretakers of all that he has made. Perhaps as we come to an end, each of us could think of just three things that we could do in response to God's call on our lives. It might be to commit to pray or to to be more informed. It might be to change something about the way we consume or we spend our money. It might be about finding a way to campaign or support organisations involved in this work. And just a bit of a side note, the addition of the vine that's just about been produced this week will also have ideas for how we can change the way we live, to live more responsibility, more as God's co-workers, in line with his amazing garden and with his amazing good news and with his amazing gospel and good plans for our world. May God bless us. May God inspire us. May we, we change in response to uh, what's been a very challenging week, I believe. May God bless us. Thank you.